What's the best way of stopping biodiversity loss if you're building something new? Well, first, you can try and avoid sticking your development right on top of a precious habitat. And that goes for your construction materials and cranes as well. But when you can't avoid everything, you can try and minimise the effects that you have, either by being fairly sparing with, say, pollutants and chemicals that you use, or by avoiding building on the particularly precious bit of habitat that you might have in the corner of your site. If damages are to be done, though, perhaps temporarily from all of the construction activity going on, you can then compensate for that, aiming to restore what you can on site where possible, perhaps enhancing environment or creating a new patch. Failing that, though, your final option, if you're paving over every single square inch of your development site, is to offset the damage you've done by supporting a biodiversity enhancement scheme off site. Give your money to landowners who are improving biodiversity elsewhere. And the fact that you might want to do this is an incentive for landowners who want to offer up their land for something good. Now this collection of how actions makes up what's called the mitigation hierarchy, where you have the most preferable actions at the top, all the way down to the least preferable at the bottom. Try and avoid any damages, or at the very least minimise them, compensate for any damage that you do do, ideally by restoring on site, or if all else fails, you can offset somewhere else. This is the order that it should really go in. 